All right, we're going live. Just bear with me, folks. Make sure we get all our electrons booked up. Hope you're all having a beautiful Sunday afternoon or could be morning for some of you. As we're heading into, uh, we are in Super Bowl Sunday. Okay, now I just need to check and refresh my page to see that we're live. Okay, well, I'm getting the indication we are live. Hey, greetings, everybody. Um, you know, thank heavens the cold snap is done. The, oh, there's, uh, let me turn my uh, audio That was down me, to. I believe. Oh, okay. maybe that was you. I, I'm not sure. I think we're good, though. Already, okay. hey, well, good connecting with you, Brian. You, I was thinking about you, our last last call together, you and Cabo, and then mm -hmm. traveling back. Is, is that a flight or a drive? That's a flight. That okay. Would be quite a drive, yes. Okay, sorry. I have no context mm -hmm. of geography. I didn't look it up, but it's San Lucas sounds really kind of, is it an island? Is this an actual island where you are the at? The very bottom tip of Baja, California. So from oh. Northern California, it's about a three and a half hour flight. It's easy to get to. Oh. Um, and it's quite a modern city down there. But okay. there's, you know, you just drive out of town a little bit and you're in beautiful remote beaches. Um, it's incredible. Wow. Winter time vacation. And of course, you know, the North right now, the, the Midwest is going through heck. And every day the weather down there was just so boring. It was in the mid seventies. Oh, rub um, it in. Just sunny with some clouds and haze. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pretty real boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw your pictures, your videos and definitely something that uh, can be a wonderful outcome with the business model that you have put together through your own path of self-discovery and i was just remarking to you right before we kicked this off i said i, I mean I, I remember it like yesterday you walking me through you're getting this new information and there you are connecting everything upstairs there and i think you have a very unique ability that i'm just gonna say some folks it might have taken them 20 years to even get there I think that's twofold. One, you're a 10 plus year Amazon veteran, but you definitely are a very systems process minded person. And I've been thinking about that, reflecting on that the last couple of days, actually. Not everybody is wired to think in those step, in a step by step logical fashion, wired to think of processes and systems, but, but you are. You mm, are. Thank you. And so the outcome of your business is your ability to do that. I actually made notes today this morning. Um, it's one thing to create a system or it's one thing to learn and master something, but it's a whole other thing to create a system out of it and design it such that it can be replicated for others. <laughs> Not you know what? I, when I saw this, so we're talking about print on demand, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to print uh, single designs on products and and you just create a mock up of the product. You create an, an image of it. So the product doesn't actually exist. You put an image on it that you think will appeal to a customer. We we sell to nurses and to teachers and to mothers and dads and lots of different niches like that. So we put on designs on these everyday products that we think will appeal to people. And it doesn't cost us anything to do that because it's just a, a image of the product. And then um, somebody places the order and you know, you, you then have the product made. That's what print on demand is. You don't print the product. You don't actually make the product until somebody has already ordered it and paid for the product. So when I saw this about three years ago and was looking at it as a business model, I'm selling on Amazon and I'm struggling finding inventory. That's always the big challenge when you're selling on Amazon, selling on eBay is where do I get more inventory? Where do I get more inventory? Especially unique inventory. And here's this endless supply, potentially endless supply of unique inventory. And I'm with, even with my Amazon experience, I know I can sell it, but I don't know that I can really systematize it. Mm. And so even then three years ago, I'm looking at this and I think, wow, will this really work? Will this, can I make this really be what I want it to be? So I have this unending supply of new products 
to put on Amazon that will sell um, and that I can do the traveling that I want to do, that I'm accustomed to doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So thank you for that compliment. It, it worked just beautifully. In fact, it worked be better than I ever imagined that it would work. And I want to, before we go on, anyone who's here, please go ahead and comment uh, a warm welcome. And yes, indeed, a warm welcome to Judith. She does say it is beautiful and warm. Yeah, they've gone from what, 50, 60 below windshield to um, windchill up to what is it today for you, Judith? I know it's definitely warmed up where I'm at. It's gone up to 61. Yay. But poor Minnesotans and Chicago really toughed it out. But folks, go ahead and write in the comments section. Let us know where you're calling in from and if you have any questions for us. Um, yeah, Brian, so back to that point of you creating a system and now people are able to, this is so important, they're able to leverage off of first your inquiring mind, your problem solving mind that even was seeking in that way and that you found a solution and then how you went into it. And of course you did it in a systematic way and they get to leverage off of that, which is akin to McDonald's had created this, this system of creating hamburgers and fries and it became this replicatable system such that someone could buy that. And that's the whole franchising concept. This isn't exactly the franchising concept, but I think the only difference other than the whole legal naming and everything or structuring is that it's gonna be their line of products but the system and everything you've done is the same. Am I wrong on that? Yeah, you know, it's uh, a franchise means that everything is a process. Every task is a process and that somebody can be taught how to perform that process routinely, you know, predictably. Right. And I think this is the same way. Um, I have uh, several staff members who are hiring another staff member now. Uh, my main VA, as I call him, my principal VA, Nick, um, he'll be managing two people mm. and we're cross training everybody. So in fact, he's doing the cross training Wow! Uh, so that my entire team knows how to do each other's jobs. It is a predictable system. Um, and then I have more plans for even greater scale as well. And I keep thinking, okay, am I ready to, to take that next step? Which means that now I'm manufacturing. I do that on a small scale. Oh. Um, but I've been thinking about doing it on a larger scale. Yeah, I have to um, just grab a book. Oh, it's in arm's reach. I'm compelled, I feel compelled to share this because I just trained on this like a week ago or so. Hey there, hi, Tim. Whoa, 54. <laughs> That must feel like a heat wave in comparison. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's insane. Um, this, this book, you know this well, Brian, mm -hmm. the employee, the S, uh, so, solopreneur, basically someone who basically has a business that is really, it's a job. If you don't show up in this business, you don't get paid, all right? But up here in this B quadrant, a B quadrant person is someone who, sets up people and systems such for the business to run with or without them. Would you say that's true of what you've designed and created here through your business? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty true. Um, you know, going to Cabo, uh, I was gonna work all the time that I was down there. It, it was a working vacation. Uh, so the majority of the work that I did was not on my own business. It was working uh, for the e-commerce business school. And I did uh, my calls, most of my calls, and the, you know the coaching and the training that I do. Um, so the rest of my business, my Amazon business, pretty much ran by itself. I did very, very little on that. That's that's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if, if I were doing retail arbitrage and or selling books, uh, the problem I had there is if I would leave, go out of town. Um, yes, Amazon continued my sales, but if I wasn't finding product, mm -hmm. I would take a dip in my revenue. And it always happened after the fact. So I would leave for like a two week vacation and not send in any new products. And then when I would come back, that's when my revenue started to dip. 
And so I would have to hustle, kind of like double time. Mm -hmm. you know, they right. say that self-employed yeah. never really can, we can never really go on vacation yeah. because we don't get paid a vacation, paid leave. If we leave our business, our business suffers. Well, that's the way it has been. But back to your book, that cash flow quadrant, this is now moved over into that B level where I can take the time off. And, and I'm grateful that I have a team and it's a small team. It's not like I have this huge team that I have to manage. Um, I don't have a huge amount of payroll. I have one part-time local person that is American wages. And um, I have a couple of contract people plus two full-time VAs and now I'm hiring a third full-time VA. Wow, that's Those awesome. Those wages are really reduced. Yeah. All right. Anyone else here? Make sure you write in the comments and do let us know if you have any questions. Want to let people know this was our grand opening this past Thursday with a new addition that you have created, Brian, that especially is a breath of fresh air for people who are familiar with print on demand and typically going straight to Shopify and typically paid advertising, which we know paid advertising can scale very fast. I know that well myself. However, there's there's a learning curve to that. And it costs money to test with paid advertising. Now, Amazon, you know, you this is how you actually started your brand store and your print on demand kind of in an organic fashion. You didn't have a Shopify store to begin with and didn't even really need it right out of the gate, did you? No, no. I did have a different uh, Shopify store. And it, so Shopify is just a, a um, uh, I'm, I'm missing the word that I want. It's a platform for building a website and building web stores, especially. So I did have a web store called Visionelle. I sold beauty products on it. And these were beauty products that I sold on Amazon as well. And I never really was able to do much with it because of the whole uh, advertising challenge, traffic challenge. And our members see that too. They experience that same, mm -hmm. same challenge of driving traffic to their web stores. And then um, I found the print on demand and I thought, oh, this is great. I can make any kind of brand that I want and I can sell to any niche that I want. Where previously I was selling the beauty. Now I'm looking at it thinking, well, what niche do I really want to sell to? And that was the beauty, the organic nature of it of selling on Amazon first is I got to test different niches. Uh, so a lot of people know that I have a brand and a web store. It's called Stir Crazy Gifts, stircrazygifts.com. But we're building a second brand called Nurses Are Strong. And I wouldn't have done that except for I was able to test and validate that niche through Amazon first. And I was able to test and validate products. So now that as we build our nurses are strong and we have a community for that, a Facebook community. We also have um, a, a segment of our Stir Crazy Gifts web store is, uh, ten, is targeted towards and branded as nurses are strong. I already have products in that that I know that are winners. That's the nice thing about it. So when I'm spend advertising towards those products, I know they're going to do well because Amazon has shown that they do well. I don't, there's no guessing on that. And that's part of a problem for companies when they're testing new products and they throw a lot of money at advertising at those new products. And they're hoping that one, they get the advertising right. Two, they get the, the audience right. Right. So you've got to make sure there's a match between your target audience that you're advertising to and your product. Um, and three, they have to get the ad right itself. Yeah. They have to get the messaging of the ad. Well, Amazon gives me two of those things already. I already know I have the audience right because it's proven mm -hmm. and I have the product right. So now it just comes down to the messaging. And, you know, the product page on Amazon gives me some of that as well, some of that messaging. So mm -hmm. it helps. It's an incredible shortcut yeah. towards advertising success on your own store. And I'm hoping as people are listening to this, they're, if they're selling on Amazon now or selling on eBay, they're thinking, great, I can have more products that I can sell on Amazon and eBay and have better cash flow. Well, that's true. But I hope you're also thinking, um, I want my own brand and I want my own store. I want my own customer list. I want right. these assets uh, because that's really 
the end goal. And Amazon is just this really nifty and easy uh, and convenient stepping stone towards getting that. Right. Yeah, 100% agreed. Going for that end outcome, but you're, I don't know if I want to call it cheating, um, you're definitely mitigating the risk by having Amazon do the hard work for you, mm -hmm. which is, it's, it's quite, having been an internet marketer for 14 years, marketing and advertising is the hardest work. I can vouch for that. And so thank you, Amazon, for doing that for me. Why do authors try to launch on Amazon? Because Amazon has the eyeballs. Yep. And yep. so it's just sound business sense to leverage. Nothing wrong with that. It's, it's smart. It's business smart to use Amazon to find out, is my niche really valid? Are my ideas even valid? I've always had this saying, you put it to the market and the market will tell you. Definitely. You can guess. You can, you can use educated guesses of what's really going to sell, but it's the market that's going to prove it. Yeah, definitely. Any questions while we're here together? I do want to let people know that we have a really steep discount on our course, Per Non Demand Profit System. It lasts until midnight tonight at Central Standard. And with that, our the huge stack of bonuses that come with that. And then it goes back to its regular price, uh, midnight central. Um, Brian, I thought it might be beneficial um, when you are talking about, especially when people move to wholesale, private label, et cetera, it is kind of this all out fight, if you will, for Amazon sellers to find products and they go to a trade show, for example, or they know how to go online and find those products. But lo and behold, another Amazon seller access the same wholesaler. We know that happens, you know, unless you make this exclusive deal with the wholesaler, but they don't know how you're going to perform. Maybe another seller is going to outperform better. They sell to that same Amazon seller. And before you know it, you got competition and it can happen so fast, almost as fast as you get your order and you get your shipment, there you are back into this competition with another Amazon seller. So that quest to get your own product, we're talking about control of your business as well. Mm -hmm. And so you have your brand and now you gain control, which puts you in a really enviable situation as an Amazon seller because it is a hot sellers platform. And I thought I would show people um, kind of the whole realm, not only getting your brand and then your the slogans, however they may be on the print, but the number of types of products that it quickly becomes a multiplier. I see Candida is here and I know she knows full well um, when I saw in a about 30 days, 40 days, she had almost 10,000 products, um, different products in her store, and you can see why. Uh, so maybe if you wanna just talk through, Brian, what this, how this serves as a multiplier to gain a competitive advantage. Yeah, you know, would you, uh, I know you have the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation open. Would you go to slide, let's do 50, uh, 52. It's up just a few more there. Oh, right here. Yeah, okay. There we go. So these are examples of print-on-demand products. And then we'll look at those other ones that you were just showing. And if you look at the picture on the left, that's a shirt. Not one of my designs, by the way, but it could have been very easily. And so that's a design with the heartbeat and the, um, uh, what do you call the life beat? You know, that, that uh, there's a scan machine that would be hooked up to uh, a patient and it shows the heartbeat. And it's also got a little heart. So it's a cute little design for nurses. And somebody created that. That's a print on demand type of design right there. Um, it's a t-shirt with a custom design on it. And somebody ordered at least four of them for this hospital or this clinic because there's four nurses wearing the same shirt. That's one of the beauties of, of doing this. The ones on the right, the pillows there, that's targeted towards teachers. So if you're doing wholesale, you're going to a manufacturer who's already produced a design like this, and then you buy it, and maybe uh, three or four other sellers buy it and also put it on Amazon. So you're competing on these same exact designs. Or let's say you go to China 
and you're buying a product and you have to buy 500 units because you're buying directly from the manufacturer there and they can put your brand name on it. But generally it's a generic design, a generic manufactured product with your brand name. This gets past both of that. You don't have any of the competition from other sellers because you create your own design here. So somebody did that for the nurses, somebody's done that for the teachers. And then once you have that design, like that influence, the influence of a good teacher can never be erased. We have something similar ourselves and we've got it on a coffee mug, we have it on a t-shirt, we have it on a pillow like this, we have it on a variety of products. Go down to that next, to those other products that you were showing there. So you can take one design like that t-shirt, like one of those pillows, and you can put it on a mug. You can put it on a tote bag. You can put it on um, a wall hanging, uh, maybe even a bath mat or a body pillow and just kind of go through these slides here. So it gives you this availability to reach lots of different people who are interested in different kinds of products uh, with one design. And it means you can really scale. You don't have to create a thousand different designs to have a thousand different products. You can create 20, 30, 40, 50 designs and have a thousand products. It's just tremendous what you can do with this. And because um, somebody might be interested in a t-shirt, you have somebody else that's interested in a coffee mug and somebody else that's interested in a Christmas ornament. You have different seasons you can sell to. There's just so much flexibility. And this is the fun part where your creativity comes into play here because as you look at all of this, you think, oh, wow, what if I did it on a phone case then? And what if I targeted that towards a business so that they could give away these phone cases or they could give them to all their employees or the same with coasters, um, the puzzles. There's just so much you can do with this. It's so much fun and it's all unique. It's all unique. And it you do learn this skill set, knowing how to do this. I know Candida is here where people get intrigued and then these business opportunities even open up and say, could you create that for me too? They're wanting to leverage the skill and knowledge that you've developed and pay you to do it. They don't want to take the time to learn it. They're like, wow, you're an expert at this. So not that the course was in, intended to do that, but uh, I mentioned this author earlier and he does uh, Robert Kiyosaki and he's always advocating uh doing things that develop skill sets that become marketable. And so a different world of opportunity can also open up just out of the fact that you know how to do this because this can help so many businesses. Like you say, a company where I'll take the case of e-commerce business school as an example, Brian, I'll bet you everyone who's in the e-commerce business school would love to have a phone case that says e-commerce business school. And, um, and who knows what else, jackets, and we have notebooks already and mugs, courtesy of Brian, but um, there's just so many opportunities that come out of this. What I find too, that is um, really valuable to people in terms of, again, looking at all the benefits of this business model is people have a concern when they tie up money into inventory I was in a mastermind of yours and there was a gal, this is like four years ago. I think she said she had a friend with a hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory in the Amazon warehouse. That's a lot of money sitting in a warehouse. There's no money sitting in any warehouse with this business model. You, you don't spend any money upfront on inventory. It's not until after the customer makes a purchase from you. That is such a game changer. Uh, again, how these risks are just taken off the plate and now all the more so, Brian, because you're teaching this from Amazon. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, there's there's two skills that people really need to do with, with Amazon and, and we teach both of these. And one of them is that ability to research a new product on Amazon. So we have this there's a slide on it if you wanted to go to it, but it's four steps. Um, let's see, it'd be mm -hmm. slide 64. Yeah, right there. There's this, There's four considerations, these four factors, and you just need to know how to address this. You need to know what to look for. It's all objective information, so you can look up 
uh, customer search terms and the amount of volume. You can look up what's selling well. You can look at the number of competitors and uh, gauge um, how stiff your competition is. And net profit is all numbers. So you can understand this. It's not difficult. The second um, skill that you need to develop is one of product design. And it's actually a lot of fun. Where people think, oh, that's so hard. Well, it's easy to get other people to do it if you want to, but it's also easy for you to do it yourself too. And there's so many resources on the internet, even free resources to do this. So um, I think it's a lot of fun. Amazon makes it easier. You know, hopefully everybody will say, I want to build my own brand and my own website and have my own customer list. But Amazon is this nifty shortcut. Mm -hmm. Let's, they've got great uh, uh, traffic there, great customers. Let's take advantage of that. Awesome. Well, we're going to give it a wrap because I think you have another call coming up. So I just want to, by the way, there was Brian. And by the way, the link here in the post, that takes you to our replay where you can see the entire presentation where Brian walks um, our members through this so they understand how this model works. There's this multi-purposing and design that, Brian, I can't imagine this took you very long at all <laughs> to find that design and just go, yep, there you go. There's a good example. And away you go. Replay. Watch the replay. I'll show you how I did it. It was very simple. Yep. So this is everything you get, the five steps we go through. And then it all comes together here, everything that you receive, um, a number of bonuses uh, that you get the entire course. You get the Facebook ads training, um, the community, Amazon custom. That in itself is enormously valuable. Uh, communicating with your designer, the POD quick start session, which is on Monday, by the way. Um, so that is all a part of the course. Well, I think we're going to give it a wrap, but I want to thank you for taking time on this Super Bowl Sunday, Brian, to um, come in and share with folks before the um, deadline ends for people to get a really great discount on the training that you have put together. And it's going live this Thursday, the Amazon training. It starts mm -hmm. this Thursday. Yep. Yeah, yep. awesome. I All right. Well, yeah, joining me. I love to teach, and uh, this is a great program. It absolutely is. It's uh, you've done it before with the book flipping program, and now here you are again with this one. Totally replicatable, and folks, then you can outsource and have a team do it for you, just like Brian has. All right, so go ahead and click on the link in this post if you're watching this from this replay. Learn more about this, and then be sure to join us before the discount goes away. So have a great, uh, wonderful Sunday. And if you're a big football fan, I hope your team wins. All righty. Thank you, Brian. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.